Hello everyone, and welcome back to Prehistoric Kingdom, where we are watching big girls stomp around. And just look at her, you guys! I am still so in love with her feathery... Oh, what a big yawn and big teeth she has. Look at that. I am in love with the way she looks. This is so amazing. I can't believe we've only looked at like three of the dinosaurs that are going to come in Prehistoric Kingdom. And I already just kind of want to bask and watch them all day. Now, you know, I would be a little concerned if I wanted to just sprawl on the lawn and hang out with Big Girl because I'm pretty sure that she would have me for lunch. But there's something peaceful about it. It kind of reminds me of the bird watching that I love to do in real life, just with a bit more of an edge of danger. A little bit bigger teeth, I would say. Oh, but this is so awesome, and I am so glad. Look at her go! I am so glad that you guys have also been loving falling in love with all of these different dinosaurs and some of the hints of what it looks like we're going to be able to enjoy in Prehistoric Kingdom, including the T-Rex Cafe. And good on you guys, I was immediately calling it the Tex-Rex Cafe for some reason, probably because I grew up in Texas and so like everything was like Tex-Mex mix when you were going out to eat. But T-Rex, T-Rex, there's even a built-in pun. How could I not fall in love with this? Oh my gosh. The on non leafy leaves seem to be doing well. Right now the guests aren't really going anywhere and a lot of you guys were like, oh Siri, give the guests lots of extra paths. So we'll try to give them a little bit of attention today to see if they like actually sit down on the benches and stuff like that yet. But again, this is a very, very early alpha kind of taste test of what prehistoric kingdom is going to offer. Oh, look at you. Look at you. And I just, oh, I just, I could spend all day with just the dinosaurs, the trees, and the leaves, to be honest, friends. So I have been neglecting the guests, and I don't know if they'll actually do any of the animations of sitting down. They don't shop right now. That's not to alarm you about what the final version of the game is going to be like. This is just to give us that little sampler to get us super hyped and excited. And one of the other things I want to do today is try getting a couple of the dinosaurs that actually have the same patterning to see if we see any of variation in that patterning between them just yet. One of the features of Prehistoric Kingdom that is going to come out is that there should be very subtle variations between the dinosaurs, or so saith the rumors at least. I don't know if that's like 100% true. Sometimes when people get hyped, rumors can really fly. But so saith the rumors that we should actually be able to go ahead and enjoy, oh my gosh, this is so cool! We should be able to go ahead and enjoy being able to see just tiny differences in the appearance between two species that have the same kind of patterning. So very excited for that. Let me go ahead and actually try to get a good picture. Oh, look at you. I love how you can change the, ang the angle of light and the time of day because sometimes you sort of need to finagle with both pieces to be able to really dive in and get like these dinosaur shots you want. This is going to be so much fun, you guys! What about when it comes out, we could try doing some dinosaur picture contest. That would be really fun! Why aren't we doing that with Planet Zoo already? Oh, I'll try to make that a thing. And then here we have one of our Nosoraptor, or Nosoraptors, oh my gosh, our Nosoteratops taking a little snooze. I love how they're not clipping to just kind of lay flat. I love how you already see such attention to detail on going ahead and working. Oh, that's so cool too. I mean, look at how epic this looks. Isn't this absolutely amazing? I love how you can see that kind of attention to detail in the way that the dinosaurs react, how they push their weight, where they lay down. That is in response to how you shape the terrain. That's really well done. I'm very excited for that because really a lot of the realism with these dinosaurs, I feel, comes from making it so that you really feel like you're watching them move and and that movement is really controlled by how they move their body weight, how they shift their weight side to side. Think about when you watch an elephant like walk or a horse walk, a lot of what you see in that ripple of the muscles as they're actually moving is where they're shifting their body weight in response to the environment and terrain that they're in. So pulling that off with the dinosaurs is definitely a very important piece of the puzzle of making them look so amazing. But all right, now that we've gone ahead and we've got a little sample of the trees, I will try to restrain myself from the trees for just a minute. Let's go ahead and satisfy those of you guys who are worried about our guest by looking over the guest facilities for just a second. We not only have the T-Rex Cafe, but there's also family restrooms, a clothing store, a normal restroom, 
information kiosk and an entrance tunnel. Let's put down an information kiosk. That sounds really cool. I want people to be well informed about the dino raptors that they are going to be looking at. Ooh, and that's really well designed. Oh, a little park guide. Can I read it? <gasps> you can actually kind of wiggle in. First founded in 2001, our park was originally designed as a scientific enclosure to explore emerging genetic technologies. Big and big and bigger. Rewriting prehistory. Feeling lost? Visit the information center to a map to find your way around the park. And there's even like a little contact number on the bottom. Those are the kinds of tiny details that I actually soak up with a lot of love. And there we go with another one of our Edmontosaurus. Tyler, I hope you're doing well. Oh, there's even benches around here. I actually would love to make an information kiosk in Planet Zoo too that folds together like a kiosk and seating. Why have I never thought to do that before? My mind is blown. That is such a creative idea. I'll be intrigued to see if they actually like use the seating on the information kiosk. It's those little details that can get you really excited. And otherwise, let's go ahead and put down a couple of modern benches just so people can go ahead and rest. Like, oh wait, oh, hey, she actually like stopped at the information spot. Does that mean that she'll come over and potentially maybe like go to a clothing store? Will they use these bins? I don't know what they're throwing away. Hopefully not their hopes and dreams. Oh, look at you. Oh, you're so pretty. So pretty. All right, so let's actually put down one of the clothing shops then. We'll name it. Wow. It's a lot bigger than I thought. We'll name it after Big Girl. Let's see. And we might actually have to move it into invalid placement. Well, actually, we can move it into the trees. <laughs> oh, there we go. We'll go ahead and put it down in the trees. And just for those of you who were so worried about our guest... I love how you can just make this wider, and then we'll hook it up like so. Just for those of you who were so concerned, now people can come over to Apato Apparel, where hopefully they will be able to purchase all of the souvenirs that their hearts are singing for. I love the, the designs. The logo designs on all of the buildings so far have just been absolutely magnificent. That's another little detail that's kind of, like, it's hard to pull off correctly to have really snaggy logos for different brands. It really is, trust me, as someone who has to think about those things for my career. <laughs> and so I'm really impressed with what they've done there, too. But speaking of clothes and speaking of the way things look, I think today we're going to give Big Girl a few friends. So let's put down some more of the T-Rexes and let's actually see if we can tell the difference between some of them up close and also like between male and female and maybe some variation in their different coloration. Don't know if that's actually part uh, variation in their different coloration. Ha, huh, that kind of rhymed. I don't know if that's actually like part of what you can do here yet, but do we want leather hide, molten, brumal, scorched? Let's go with a good leather hide. We'll grab one male and we'll grab one female. And then let's get another female brumal and we'll compare that to our lovely big girl. And then we'll get a couple of these scorched varieties too. I don't have, <gasps> I'm out of money now? Who runs out of money in sandbox mode, I ask you? Oh my word. There, we're bringing in some money. I can't believe you can run out of money in sandbox mode. Come buy my things. Oh my gosh, suddenly the apparel store, which is extremely popular, by the way. Wow, are people coming out with the, the apparel? I don't know if they're coming out with the apparel, but I think people go in, money comes out. I like it. Maybe I need to just make the path like further into the Omnoms. So that people can like go get their noms, go get your alms to nom friends. Like, come on in here. It's active. Uh, maybe I need. Whoa! Sorry about that. Maybe I need more clothes. Let, I guess we're gonna become famous for like having a T-Rex clothing line. I'm I'm kind of aghast that I have run out of money. <laughs> Who knew that putting down a bunch of wild T-Rexes to roam your island would actually cause you to run out of funds? Um, but she's actually taking a nap back there. Let's make like a little clothing mall, I guess, down here. It's kind of horrendously ugly, but lucky for us, this is just Funzie's sandbox time. And then we'll go ahead and have a little curved path right over here. And then 
We'll wiggle oh, invalid placement. No. Okay, we'll wiggle this way. And come and buy more of my clothes, little ants. There we go. The people look like little ants right now, but that's fine. There, okay. So I'm not sure if that's actually going to get them going down that path. I hope it does, because we need more money. <laughs> but I guess we're going to run like a T-Rex clothing line. Oh, that looks atrocious. Let's go ahead and fill it in with plants. That will fix everything. All right, we'll grab a few of these, a few of those. Let's get some ground cover, increase the density, decrease the size a little. Arr, and I can't manually, I have to manually put in the trees that are closer if I want to be able not to have to look at what we've done. Bringing capitalism into the noble, the noble endeavors of being able to just fill the world with dinosaurs. Oh, 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 that's more like it. That's more like it. Get those trees in there. Take that capitalism. All right. Now I don't have to think about looking at this while it makes us a bunch of money. Excellent. Also, people will have plenty of shade as they walk through there and hopefully... No, we have no money now. <laughs> well, I guess I did spend a ton of money getting the apparel things down. But all right, let's go ahead and release the T-Rexes and we'll watch where they actually release... Where they're actually going to roam. Oh, look at them, you guys. Oh, they're so cool. Okay, let's see what this male, Everett, is going to get up to. We'll slow him down for just a second. Oh, look at that. I really like his colors. I really love the detail on his textures. Oh, look, and his big girl taking a nap. Oh, she's snoozing on the little fern. Oh, that's so cool. It is big girl, and she is indeed taking a little snooze. We have just woken her. I feel like this is a moment where you would possibly want to run for your life, but it's also kind of amazing. And then let's see if I change the light angle. All right, she is safely snoozing under the leaves. Safely snoozing in the shade. And we'll try to get her next to the other female T-Rex that we've got as soon as we can find the other Bermel that she has run off. That's fine. That's fine. It's sandbox mode. We don't need to worry about, like, our T-Rexes running off. That, that's totally cool. In fact, it actually makes it kind of fun to have to come in and be like, so, where did that several ton? Aha. Uh -huh. Aguta, hello. We're going to name her Little Sister, which is actually the name of my sister's cat, but also a designation to note that this is going to be Big Girl's little sister, and I'm curious if they actually have identical patterns, probably right now. But this is for science! It is a worthwhile endeavor to try to figure out. Oh, I love just creating like an area for them to roam loose. This is so cool. And then we just have a bunch of snoozy T-Rexes. This is what I mean, you guys! I could see so much of my time being spent just relaxing with them. The world is so pretty. Look at the way that they move. There's a lot of love and dedication and attention to detail. Watching the T-Rex stand up just then with like that power squat finally made my brain click about how they would get up and down. I've not really thought about that. And then did you see that smooth movement of the tail as a balance, a counterbalance to help Everett get up on, yeah, get up on his legs. And be able to come over and do a little bit of growling. Oh, that's so cool. All right, so is this little sister again? Nope, that's actually one of the other T-Rexes. Okay, note to self, I have... Here's big girl! Oh, you got her. I, I do need to try to keep some idea of where they are. All right, so we're going to move big girl over here with little sister. And then we're going to pause. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. So now we can see up close... The way these two look side by side and we can try to determine is there a little bit of variation yet there probably won't be so don't be alarmed if there's if they just like look the same wow they look so cool <laughs> don't be alarmed if they look the same but i just want to take a second i mean i think that they're big girl i think looks bigger but just because they're kind of walking side by side right now there now we literally are right up nose to nose and actually, all right, is that my imagination? Hmm. Hmm. 
All right, I think they're identical right now when you, yeah, down to the little micro scratches on their face and everything, when you get really close, but wow, for just a second, I was thinking, you know what, if you need to get this close to be able to tell your T-Rexes apart, you are probably too close. It's like that sign, objects in the mirror, closer than they appear, um, you're probably gonna get nommed. So, I love that, I love that. They're so cool, you guys, oh my gosh. All right, and then we have Everett moving about. I love his coloration too. We just have a, a group of T-Rexes roaming through the forest. I don't know, and actually I could see you some of your guys' information and theories. Do you know if any of the T-Rex line or any of their cousins would have potentially hunted in groups? I don't know if they would have. They kind of remind me of other big predators that we have in the modern era, who usually hunted on their own so that they didn't have a lot of competition for prey. But this was also an era where there would have been plenty of very large prey to enjoy. Oh, beautiful. And speaking of large prey to enjoy, let's actually come over, and since T-Rexes turn out to be extremely expensive to create, let's look up a couple more of the animals that you can have, like... Can I make a few of these guys? <gasps> yes, I can! Like this amazing... And I'm gonna do my best, guys. Uh, Styra Quaceris. Quaceris. Styra Quaceris. Sty the little Styras. We're just going to call them the little Styras for short. We have the shoreline variant with the males here and the females. It looks like these guys knew that they were around some other predators. Potentially not the T-Rex because remember all of these dinosaurs are from different eras in a very long prehistory that our planet had before we even showed up. But these guys are in groups of one to four animals. I, it looks like one female and one male, so maybe like even ratios, or maybe just like a family group, a male and female and some other offspring. And they've made the males a little bit brighter. And I love those spikes down the back. How did we get information and an idea of those spikes down their back? I love being able to be inspired to really follow my curiosity with something fresh and new. This is awesome. And then we've also got the jagged, oh, look at that. I love their colors, the jagged design on the styras, and the psychedelic, look at you! <gasps> I want to get some of these psychedelic little styras running around our forest. That is so pretty, it reminds me of a lot of the different bird species we have. Alright, let's get one male, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get one male, one female each. Oh, I don't have enough funds! How could I run out of money? <laughs> People should be spending tons of money to come and see our amazing animals. All right, we'll speed things up for just a second. And then we'll release ourselves a little herd of these guys out back. There we go. And let them start roaming. Oh, they're roaming a little too fast. There we go. And let them start roaming about and maybe put down some grasslands for them. <gasps> Look, one of our Nosoteratops has just roamed out into the open grasslands. That is so awesome! Oh, look at that, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I see a lot of potential for this not only to be a really beautiful tycoon game, where if you want to focus on the more tycoon aspects of modularly building things and then running your, uh, your actual, like, sanctuary or zoo or facilities, whatever you want to call it, what would it be? Is it a zoo? I guess it's a zoo. You have just different types of animals in it, but I guess it's a zoo. So depending on how you would want to run, well, actually, let's call it your prehistoric kingdom after the game. That makes so much sense. Depending on how you want to run your prehistoric kingdom, I feel like the tools we're being given could really allow you to create some kind of like nature reserve areas where you could stare off into the distance and you could just see a whole bunch of these guys roaming across some big open wilderness that you can really shape and control under your own management, under your own ideas, much more than you could in Jurassic World Evolution, which always kind of felt working a little bit more with like set modular pieces and zones. This feels a lot more like the open world of Planet Zoo, where if you really want to try to make something that looks kind of naturalistic as possible, so you could just slide down in here, sit back, and watch all of the animals roam by and kind of get a little bit of a sense of like being on a safari or being out in the wilderness with them, that you'd be able to pull that off with this. Oh, this is so pretty. 
I really love this. It's giving me so many aspirations and dreams to like work on stuff in zoo crafting and to try to like change things. There we go. Look at those eyes. Kind of like a, like a goat. I almost said a deer, but kind of like goat eyes. Maybe seeing in a, a wider ratio around them to watch out for predators. Because I doubt they would have evolved these spikes if they didn't worry about getting chomped by someone. Oh, look at them move. Oh, you guys, I love this. All right. Well, I'm going to run things on fast forward for a little bit and see how the dinosaurs move when they've got a little bit more zip in their step. And then let the money pile up and we'll go ahead and add in a few more dinosaurs just to kind of top off the awesomeness that we are seeing with Prehistoric Kingdom. We will coo over all of their movements. I'm really, really in love with just watching them as they roam through the land. Oh, and just admiring the animations. I haven't admired animations on like pixelated animals this much since we first got into Planet Zoo. And it feels fantastic to kind of see this new era of what is going to be possible as we create these stories and these worlds with these powerful games. Oh, you're so cool. And then we'll just have to sit back and enjoy the hype and wait for any news as Prehistoric Kingdom continues to add to its alpha and prepare itself for its early access release, hopefully sometime around the end of the year. I can definitely say, guys, after seeing this in action, the wait is going to be worth it. And I am really, really excited for the end product. And, and you know, by maybe this time next year, we're going to start celebrating little groups of, like, itty bitty t-rexes running around which would be really really fun so if you guys could do please leave a like for our amazing free roaming dinosaur prehistoric kingdom and if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures do please consider subscribing but most importantly my friends stay curious and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye